Hello everyone, today I'm going to be looking at what cheap bits and bobs you can pick up that are going to help you uh, improve your photography. There are lots of them about, I'm sure to miss some, so if I do miss any, leave a comment below because that'll help other people and me because obviously I've not thought of them. First things first, you're going to need one of these. This is a professional full frame. I'm joking, you, you don't need one of these. Although I am assuming that you have some sort of camera. Um, if you don't have a camera, buy one of those because that will definitely be the thing that helps you improve your photography most. If you do have a camera though, have I got some treats for you. Starting with batteries. Now a lot of people overlook spare batteries, they think oh that's a bit of a faff and if you've got a Canon camera for example and you want a Canon battery, that battery is going to be super expensive, same for all manufacturers, for some reason they can't make cheap batteries. But thanks to eBay and Amazon and China, you can now pick up third party batteries for a fraction of the cost of the real ones. And typically, I mean check the reviews, but typically in my experience, they last like 80 or 90% of the time of the manufacturer's battery. So value wise, we're in. Uh, but the real reason for having them is that if you're out and you're on the last bar of battery on your camera, you start thinking, oh, is that worth getting? Should I take a photo of that? Should I wait because I know I'm going here and it's gonna be a better photo? It's a terrible way to think when you're taking photos. It's just distracting and it means more often than not, you're gonna miss really good shots. Hands down, the best way to improve your photography is to take more photos. So having more batteries will inevitably allow you to do that. And in the same vein, so will having more memory cards. Similar thing to running out of battery, if you can see you've only got 20 shots left on your memory card and you're thinking, mm, what should I take a photo of? Is that worth it? Is that not worth it? It's just pointless. Memory has never been so affordable, so you shouldn't have to think about it. It's, it's tiny, it doesn't take up any room in your bag or any weight. Buy some memory cards, it'll enable you to take more photos and your photos will get better. And finally, it's all well and good having enough memory cards, but you need the storage to keep them for the long term. Uh, I keep all my photos which is probably a bit extreme for some people, but I just never want to throw anything away. Not all photos gain their relevance overnight. Sometimes a photo is more important to you five years after you've taken it than it is the day after you've taken that. And that's because of who might be in the photo or the place it was taken. Or So I've got plenty of hard drives to make sure that I never have to lose any photos ever. Okay, I'm not saying keep all your photos, you know. You know, if you've got 10 of the same one, and one is definitely the best one, just, just keep that. But what I am saying is that you at least put yourself in a position to take all those photos and store all those photos so that you can make a judgment about it later. Okay, next up, if you do own a camera, it probably came with something like this, or this, just a horrific, branded, horrible, uncomfortable camera strap. They make you look like a tourist and they advertise to everyone exactly how expensive the camera you have on you is. Not a good idea in any situation, I don't think. So, my suggestion is that you buy a decent camera strap. Uh, this one is from Peak Design. It's bright red and I love it. Uh, it's had quite a lot of use now. It's still a bit scruffy. It's got sun cream everywhere and it's starting to fall apart a bit. But it's strong, it's super comfortable and padded and um, where it's adjustable. So you can have it as a neck strap, like so, or over the shoulder or however you want. You don't have to get a Peak Design one, obviously. There are plenty on the market. What I would look for is lots of padding over the neck and, uh, and adjustability because because you might want to carry it in a different way if, if your neck does hurt or whatever. But the important thing is you don't want in the back of your head, mm, I don't want to get my camera out because my neck hurts or it's going to be uncomfortable or it's just a bit of a faff. Next, polarizers. Ooh, a turning filter. What does that do? Shockingly, a polarizer polarizes. And what that means you'll notice in practice is that greens and blues in particular become much, much richer when you use one of these. And also this can remove a lot of reflection and glare in water, for example. So it can just give you photos a bit more punch. Uh, these come in a whole lot of sizes. I've got a few different ones for different lenses that I use. I think they're even available for some point and shoot cameras now. And I think I've seen a filter made for an iPhone as well. So really, really super good to have. Also, Polarization is a really, really tricky thing to achieve in post-production. In fact, trying to remove reflections in glare, for example, is just super tricky and um, more often than not is not gonna work. So picking up one of these is really handy. Uh, if you're not going for that, another trick I use is um, just taking your, your sunglasses. I mean, obviously, if they've got polarized lenses, if they've not got polarized lenses, then it's, it's not gonna do the trick, but you can just sort of put your camera lens up to it and take photos through that. Doesn't always work, but um, it's worth giving a go. One of the kind of filter that I think is useful, and I'm not a big filters fan, like I don't have all the cool graduated filters and, and all that stuff, but ND filters, which stands for neutral density, you can see that's the same darkness 
all the way through it. These are really, really good in super bright conditions. A lot of cameras now have electronic ones built into them, but this is obviously one that you just stick over the lens itself. These are really useful in bright conditions when you want to shoot wide open. So when you want a really low F number to be able to throw the background out of focus, these enable you to do that because often cameras can struggle in really bright conditions when you want to shoot wide open because you're throwing so much light at the sensor that the camera can't really cope. It can't give you a shutter speed short enough to give you a good exposure. So what you end up with is shots that are too bright. This limits the amount of light that comes through to the sensor, therefore allowing you to, uh, to shoot wide open. Hope that makes sense. Super useful, these come in lots of different densities. This one is a four stop. Um, I'd suggest starting out with a, maybe a, a four stop and a six stop or something. You can get 10, 15 stop ones. They have fairly niche applications and you're really gonna need to be set up on a tripod most of the time if you're gonna be using one of those. Speaking of tripods, um, a lot of people get put off buying a tripod because they don't want to carry something like this around. Now this is, in its own right, a small tripod. But the world of small tripods has really exploded in the last few years. Chances are you've probably seen something like this in the past. This is a Joby uh, Gorilla pod, maybe? Something like that. And uh, as you can see, it can bend around lamp posts and all sorts of stuff that you can now attach your camera to to take better photos. Really, really good idea. I use this all the time. I've even got a little small one for my phone cute is that? But my favourite little tripod at the moment is this from Manfrotto. Don't know what it's called, but as you can see it hasn't got bendy legs like the Joby, which I guess is a little bit limiting, but the real advantage of this one is that you can close the legs and all of a sudden it's a really sturdy selfie stick slash vlogging um, handle. And obviously as a professional vlogger now, this is, uh, this is what I use quite a lot. Yes, so pick up one of these. Tripods are useful in lots of situations, particularly in low light, and if you want to stand a chance of getting decent photos at night, then a tripod is going to be a must. Speaking of photography at night, this is a cable release. Now, nighttime isn't the only time you'd use this, but it's probably the most common. This is basically just a shutter button that is connected to a cable that obviously goes into your camera. You press it, the camera takes a photo. When you want to take a photo, say, at night, you don't want to touch the camera because the shutter's open for a long period of time and any touching of the camera will mean that you could potentially move it and therefore the shot will be blurred. So using this means that you don't have to touch the camera. Now you might say, why can't I just use the self-timer on my camera? Uh, and, and of course you can, but if you're trying to use a self-timer and take a photo of something specific, like a moving bus, then you've got to try and judge what's going to happen in two seconds, like now, and then the bus goes past and then you take the photos. It's a bit of a nightmare. So this can be um, a bit of a savior, to be honest, if you're interested in taking photos in the dark. If you don't want to use one of these, check if your camera has an app. A lot of cameras with Wi-Fi obviously have apps now, and normally you can control your shutter directly from that, which is useful. Um, what else? Oh, a flash, an off-camera flash. Uh, a lot of people are scared off by flashes, they kind of get into photography and they start really enjoying it and then they think, mm, flash and lighting, I don't really understand. I'm just gonna call myself a natural light photographer. Yeah, get a flash because it expands your options so, so much, particularly if you also get some cheap transceivers. So you can put one on the camera, one on here, and you can start using the flash off camera and you can start putting it in lots of different positions and experimenting and really, really broaden your horizons with your uh, photography. It's very, very easy to do and it's well worth experimenting with. And also it's fairly cheap. You can probably pick a couple of transceivers up for, I don't know, 20, 30 quid. This flash, again, probably 30 quid. It's not an expensive thing to get into and a, and a one flash setup is, is a really simple way to to um, begin your, your experimenting. Uh, ooh, if you're gonna get a flash, also get a little mini softbox like this, um, just to soften the light and make it look a bit less um, harsh. Particularly important if you're gonna be using the flush for things like portraits. Uh, if I've missed anything, leave it in the comments. I'm sure it'll be, as I said before, I'm sure it'll be helpful to other people and me. Um, and yeah, thanks for watching. My next video, I hope, will not be me sat indoors on a beautiful day. Cloud, cloud storage. You can also use cloud storage as well as hard drives. I mean, I saw a cloud then and I, it made me think, I know they're not the same thing. I know storage isn't, isn't actually up there, is it? Anyway, yeah, my next video probably won't be me sat indoors. I'm going to London in a minute and I hope to make a video there which is a bit more full of variety. Yes. So until the next time, thank you for watching.